Yes. None other than Ralph Patel and Wiz Jones. Hello there. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for coming in. We've got some one or two interesting questions, trying to be a bit different from other people. First of all, can you two remember where you first met? I can. Yeah. Uh, well, I know where I first saw him. Right, where was that? Brighton Beach. Right. Oh, was it? Yes, he was sitting there playing a battered guitar into the air because you know it's the worst place you can possibly play on the, by the seaside because you can't hear anything and I said is that what I think it is because he was already a legend you know you don't yeah. realize that in 19 it must be about in the early 60s it was before early 65 yeah. and Wiz will probably tell you more about it but Ken Collier's club used to tip out in the mornings at Great Newport Street and the kids all got on the milk train down to Brighton and we used to sit down there looking windswept and interested yeah. at least thinking we were and Wiz was there and I was so excited because I'd already heard about him I couldn't actually hear what he was doing yeah. that's where I first saw him but probably where we first met was probably the Olive Tree probably the Olive Tree yeah. 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 in the afternoon gig yeah. and there was an afternoon gigs on Sundays yeah. so what were the main venues and the gigs that around the London area in those days? Wiz, you first well, there was uh, Alex's Corners Roundhouse yeah. in Wardour Street, and then someone did start a, a bluesy acoustic folk club at Collier's as well. And there was Ewan doing it, Ewan and Peggy doing yeah. their stuff. And there was the Troubadour, and I guess that's about it in bunches as well. Does those cousins ring a bell at all? Yeah, that was a bit later. That was a bit later, a bit later, a bit later yeah, because yeah, that was originally the Skiffle set. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell Quay, yeah, that was open seven nights a week, yeah. playing skiffle and everyone was down there. And then they, it became Les Cousins, yeah. yeah. I, was, I thought it was Les Cousins, I was yeah, convinced it was a bloke yeah. called Les, yeah. and his surname was Cousins, yes. who ran the place. And I think it was because the Le Kilt was up the road, that, that oh, right. French yeah. disco or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great place, Great I place. mean, yeah. it was actually the birthplace of what, what a, a friend of mine calls the transatlantic years because coincidentally, you know, transatlantic records which were instrumental in picking up on, you know, young British guitar players, yeah. songwriters yeah. that found their way into the folk scene. But also, our influences were made American and English mm. mixed together, and that's a good epithet, I think. But I don't have that luxury, I'm, I'm a very slow writer, and I'm saying, with Take your time as well, don't well, I don't write at all, no, I'm too lazy. <laughs> I can't be bothered, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, what, in 55 years I might have written 10 songs. That's 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 much, it. It. Yeah, but Bruce Springsteen did <laughs> one of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's not bad, is it, for goodness sake? Not at all. No. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I don't take it seriously. Just the thing is about, he won't tell you because he's so modest, or he's, he just pushes it to one side. This man has influenced so many people, and it's partly because of his eclecticism. You know, he his choice of material, whether mm. it's from Tom Lehrer or Mads Lipscomb, mm. it doesn't seem to matter. Mm. If it's a good song, you'll probably hear Wiz Jones find it eventually yeah. and he'll play yeah. it and he gives it his own treatment. And that's what that's that's what he's done. He's influenced countless people. It's hard to market that though, that's the problem. It is. I mean it works when I'm on stage, it works. Mm. You know, but you can't sell it on paper. What is he, a folk singer? No. Blues no. player? No. Mm. Songwriter? No. Yeah. Bit of everything all mixed yeah. together, which works, but it, it's not marketable. No, it's hard to. You know, I can yeah. see your point. Right? Yeah. You know. Okay, coming out of the past and looking towards the future, and this is really quite a big one. Uh, how do you see recorded music going in the future? Well, Wiz and I are trying to do. Funny enough, that you paired us together tonight. We're actually doing a little album together anyway, and we're trying to do it in the old-fashioned way, just kind of sit down. You look at me, I look at you, and we'll whack it out and see what happens. There are so many tools at one's disposal in the studio now that um, the temptation is to clean everything up and knock every little, you know, ricket out of the way. I don't actually enjoy those 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 records that are pitch perfect. I, where is it going? I have no idea. I do know that there is some incredible young talent. Oh, the amazing. Music scene. Absolutely amazing. But the, the, reason, the reason why is, I think, when Wiz was for this is, he won't want me saying this, when he was first, he, he had a wire recorder, not a tape recorder. <laughs> Have you heard of a wire recorder? Yeah, he had one. 1920s, 30s. Well, he, 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 he recorded on a wire, maybe. Yeah. So Wiz heard all these songs and we just sat aghast and then we found the original. Slowly they trickled into the country. Where's it, where's it going? I hope it doesn't get too smart-ass and too mm. clean. Mm. 
I like the odd idiosyncrasy from in time and, and wrong chords here and there. I don't mind like that. Mm. I found it quite encouraging here that artists that are up and coming are still selling CDs. You know, from the gigs, mm, but yeah. whether they're actually doing it through the market at all, that's oh, a different. No, that's the only place you know, yeah. 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 yeah, And it's becoming so cheap now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if anybody wants to rip music off the internet, they can. Well, that's the hard thing, and that's going to kill the business, really. And, and actually, I think the organic side of things, where you go out with your guitar, sit in a room and mm. play, um, I think it will become more attractive because it's the only thing you can't get off the internet at a live mm. show. You've got to go and be there, haven't you? Yeah. You know? yeah, well, a lot of young kids now, they are downloading, but they're downloading live concerts. Yes. Because they want that spontaneous yeah. feel, you know, they're, that's what's happening. You know? And also, vinyl is very fashionable at the moment. Yeah. Coming you know, back in again. Right. It's yeah. expensive yeah. to produce, though, that's the trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It's more, it takes more oil to make a yeah. well, vinyl than it does a CD. Yeah. Yeah. Much more. Yeah. 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 Do you want to dive in? Yeah. Um, you, you've this seen, is Andrew. Uh, oh, yeah. Hi, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've seen um, quite a few different music periods, really, in the time. <laughs> what, what, what do you make of the present period in terms of live music? Well, in terms of live music, I mean, you could... Are we in touch? I don't know. I'm in touch, to be honest. I mean, I don't I get to see a few young musicians and I hear a bit of the radio stuff, but a lot of it, I, I'm not in touch. You know, how can you stay in touch now? There's so, so much to, to take, so much to hear, so much to listen to. I, I, I've got a second of that too, and I think there's this thing, of, of, you know, it, it, the music of the younger generation should be theirs, and it shouldn't be understood by the older generation, it's because we're musicians and we've lived our lives trying to be better and express ourselves better and learn more and everything. I don't mean to say we've got an opinion, young music is young music, and it should be theirs, and in fact it's healthy that we don't get it, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I can appreciate a good guitarist, anyone can, or a good musician and everything, and a good song, but I don't get the, the kind of harmonic structures of, of modern songs in the same way. Do you know what, if, they ne if no one ever recorded anything again, there would be more than enough music for me to be entertained for the rest of my life and beyond. I mean, I'm still finding things in the 40s, 30s, and great band, big bands suddenly I'm taking interest in. Wiz and I were talking the other day, and and we both listen to jazz and, and at the time when we were struggling with the guitar we still can't play jazz chords and jazz tunes but we can we hear differently um, you know I think that's what happens as you get on so it's oh, a sort of long answer but no good answer um, <coughs> following on from that what, what do you have any advice for newcomers into music well don't expect to earn a living out of it how about that I think they know that I think you've got you. <laughs> I think you know you've got to be driven by your own passion for it, and just that's its own reward. Music's its own reward. That's that's, that's what it is. You know, just to be able to play a few chords. It's very hard for young musicians now because there's so much more corporate than it ever was. Uh, such a business now. So it's much harder. I mean, we had it no, easy. Yeah, it was, we did. For when you think no, about it, there wasn't anybody doing it much. No. You know, it was a novelty. Now, you know, they just concentrate on the things they think are going to make loads of money. I mean, what, what sort of slightly depresses me is that poor kids have to watch these talent shows, alleged talent shows, where there are singers. Who's playing guitar? Thank goodness for Sky Arts, we're doing something on guitar players at the moment, which is, I saw it last night, on was really impressive that there's these young kids out there working. I don't know. I don't, I, I honestly don't know. It's, don't expect to make a living, just play music because it's its own reward. Have you, have you seen any of what's going on around in Bedford? Uh, well, I've done. tried to, yeah. um, but I haven't had much chance to be honest. Because I, I arrived and had to do a sound, sound check, then a gig, and then another sound check, <laughs> and then a short gig. No but um, I did walk around and yeah. listen to a few people. You know, I saw Edwina Hayes again. I've seen her before, but she, you know, she's a good singer. Yes, but um, I've not had a chance, you know, I only, only came here this morning. Yeah. If I'd been here for the whole weekend, I'd made sure that I'd, I'd seen other yeah. stuff, you know. But, I mean, on the, I do a lot of touring and travelling around the country, and I'm always seeing new up-and-coming people that are good, really good, you know, I mean, everywhere you go. 
you see people who are really good. A lot of them have been playing guitar or instruments as about four years old, aren't they, nowadays? Yeah, and they, 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 you know, they, they, they take it seriously as a business, you know, yeah. you know we're organised, yeah. We, our generation, we were a bit sort of uh, yeah, amateur in that way. I was going to say, yeah, well, it was actually part of a kind of quiet rebellion, really mm. being different. You know, the charts were most of pop music being played, but it went past me, I didn't notice it, I didn't take any notice of it. I had Big Girl Brunsy, I had Blind Arthur Blake, I had Blind Boy Fuller, I had Willie Guthrie, I had Wiz Jones. I mean, I had, I had other, you know, there were only a few years difference between us, but you know, there was another course of music and a subculture around it that produced geniuses like Bert Yanch, you know, and, and others, you know, out of the acoustic guitar, it was a thrilling time. And it, and it didn't matter that it didn't make it a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Are you still enjoying your music? Oh, I feel so very yeah. fortunate. I feel so fortunate. We both do. I mean, it's been our life. It's certainly been Wiz's life. He's, he's actually the, the, he travelled, played his old VW. I've had a bit of good fortune having it here, which has kind of knocked me into another world. But you know, the hours I sit at home with the guitar on my lap, so from playing the guitar for no audience at all, just makes I love it. And it feels so bloody fortunate. My last question: Any thoughts of retirement? No. no. Just I would going. retire if I could afford to. Yeah. yeah you'd last about a week. But I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Aren't you got your shed and everything? <laughs> <laughs> you'd be out there playing again and so on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did think at one point maybe there's a nice round figure would be a good time to hang up the banjo, and I thought, no. You've gone past it now. I have. <laughs> well past it, actually. But not past love of music no. and love of playing, you know. No, no, no. Ralph Mattel, Wiz Jones, thanks very much for talking to us. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you, brilliant. Thank you. Ace, absolutely ace. Yeah, yeah,